This is Mission Control Houston. Again, we're getting ready for an interview with the American crew members aboard the International Space Station coming up at 10, 10 a.m. Central Time, 11, 10 a.m. Eastern. They'll be interviewed by MSNBC's Thomas Roberts and California State Fullerton's Russ Hudson uh, with the uh, California State uh, Science and Technology writer. Please stand by for a voice check from Cal State Fullerton. Station, this is Russ Hudson with Cal State Fullerton. How do you hear me? Hey, Russ, we have you loud and clear. How us? Very good. Good morning. Good morning for us, anyway. Uh, Tracy, you've had an eventful career as an astronaut. First, for quite a while, you were the youngest to become an astronaut. You're still the first person born after the Apollo 11 moonwalk. You've had some firsts since you arrived at the space station in April as well. I'd like to ask you about those. Within a week of arriving at the space station, you were one of four women in space at the same time for the first time. What did that signify for you and for space programs worldwide? Well, I'll tell you in, in two parts, Russ. First, it's you know always um, uh, a fantastic thing to be a part of history and uh, to have my name associated with something like that and with those uh, other three women who I think are spectacular. Um, I'm very proud to be a part of that group. But I'll, the other part of this is that uh, I hope that becomes the norm and doesn't become such a um, such an interesting factoid that uh, we have uh, more than one woman uh, in space at the same time. So I'm looking forward to that being a, a normal situation. Uh Anything on that you want to say to aspiring girls and women? I wish Shannon and I had our baseball caps on right now because uh, they have a nice message that say women fly. And I, I think um, I can speak for all the ladies in uh, the astronaut corps uh, that we, we hope that uh, more ladies will uh, take on uh, the challenge of uh, flying in space and also uh, helping to build our space program. You know, there's a whole lot more to do than just flying in space. There's a lot of spectacular, exciting stuff going on on the ground, uh, helping to build spaceships, helping to uh, manage them, and to direct the flights uh, from, uh, from the ground up. So there's a lot of opportunities out there, and I think girls just need to start seeing themselves in these positions and seeing it as, uh, as a normal, everyday uh, occurrence to have uh, women um, in these kind of roles. Thank you. Okay, the spacewalks, there were three difficult ones. Uh, NASA characterized them as uh, one of the most challenging repairs ever attempted. All three of you were working on those. Um, Trace, I'd like to ask you first, how did you prepare, the, how challenging was that for you personally, both physically and mentally? Well, I tell you what, Russ, I didn't have a whole lot of time to think about it before we went outside the door. So I think for me the challenge was uh, getting getting prepared in a short period of time. We already were ready to go out the hatch to perform a, a separate EVA that had nothing to do with the pump module failing, uh, one that we had uh, practiced before together. And the task that we were about to do was one that we had practiced once before separately um, and had some familiarity with, but um, the, uh, the whole uh, or, uh, choreography was uh, going to be a little uh, on the fly. And so I think for myself it was uh, just to, um, and to go out there on my very first spacewalk, do all the things that I'd been trained to do, listen to the ground, and also, uh, like everyone told me, have fun. <laughs> There are some questions, uh, Tracy, from your friends and mentors at uh, Cal State Fullerton. I'd like to ask you, they each have a question for you. First would be your chemistry professor, John Olmsted, and he asked, um, did your training in physical chemistry at Cal State Fullerton prepare you for wrestling with the bulky ammonia pump? Oh, I love Dr. Olmsted. Um, well, I would have to say that um, what my physical chemistry uh, uh, prepared me for with the pump module is to um, understand the, the dangers of ammonia in a, in a vacuum. And um, especially if you in a spacesuit are right in line with that ammonia line as, uh, as a 
QD is being demated. I learned a lot from Dr. Olmsted. Uh, I wish I had a lot of time to talk about him, um, but one of the things he uh, introduced me to was uh, uh, hardware. And um, as a physical chemist, you spend um, as much time with a wrench in your hand and, and uh, fixing uh, lasers and, and uh, pumps than you do with a beaker and, and uh, liquid chemicals. And so uh, what, uh, what I learned a lot from Dr. Olmsted and PCHEM was, uh, was how, to, uh, how to handle hardware. Thank you. The next question is from your biochemistry professor, Scott Hewitt. And he would like to know uh, what it was like to be outside the space station for the first time on your first spacewalk. All right. Well, uh, Scott's a, such a good friend and also a, a great mentor. Um, he has to know that uh, uh, it was a, a very exciting time and a very emotional time for me as I've been wanting to uh, to do a spacewalk uh, for uh, well over a decade and uh, training for it as well. Um, I would say that it, uh, the only thing that it really rivals is uh, the moment that uh, Scott um, set up our laboratory the night before I uh, left to go on to graduate school um, and he made our equipment rack look exactly like uh, as much as he could uh, the cockpit of a shuttle. He, uh, he turned off all the lights in the lab and left all the lights on the equipment on blinking, sat me in front of it and asked me what it reminded me of. I didn't know at the time uh, but uh, he said doesn't this look a lot like the shuttle cockpit <laughs> and uh, I'll never forget that. So uh, that was a, a very touchy moment for me knowing that uh, Scott believed in me and the dream that I had and uh, going out there and walking in space uh, was a fulfillment of a dream. Thank you. I think he'll like to hear that too. Uh, Sue Fisher, another one, uh, campus radiation officer and later your friend, and she asked, and I bet you can guess this one, what shielding is on the space station to protect you from radiation? That's, oh, I love Sue. Um, back when I was uh, working for Sue, I was called a gamma girl, and it was my job to go around and uh, uh, test all the laboratories and uh, wipe them down and put them in a scintillation counter to uh, see if there was any radiation that had escaped, and it was our job to help control that. Um, I haven't been doing such uh, such uh, uh, delicate work here on the space station. We leave that to a group of folks on the ground, uh, our radiation group that uh, monitors uh, the space uh, radiation environment, and uh, they they are in close contact with our flight surgeons who notify us if there's any danger. And and I'd say that uh, the best thing we do is we wear I do wear my dosimeter every day, and as well when uh, when Doug and I went outside on our spacewalk, we wore our dosimeters. Actually, we wore two of them and um, we are constantly being updated on the space environment and if it gets uh, if it gets uh, uh, too bad um, I will let Sue know thank you <laughs> thank you uh, final question from uh, your friend and mentors Dave Reed uh, from Cal State Fullerton Public Affairs and family friend he wants to know when you were working on electrician jobs with your father in your wildest dreams did you think you'd be doing something similar in space I'll tell you what, uh, it was nice to hear from Dine. The, uh, I, I, there's a lot of uh, time in my spacewalk where I thought about uh, the work that I did with my father and I've been working for my father. I've been going on a job site since I, uh, I think before I could talk. And uh, there were definitely times on the job when I was put in situations that were a little hairy, uh, going up on rooftops of, uh, of malls and uh, fixing um, equipment that uh, was in strange places, having to use a ladder. And sometimes dad would use me to climb into the, uh, the crawl spaces in the attic because nobody else would <laughs> for some reason and uh, so there without a doubt uh, working for my father uh, both as his electrician and his daughter um, has prepared me extremely well for the kinds of uh, challenges that you face on a spacewalk as well as the kinds that uh, Doug and Shannon and I faced up here uh, with the um, spacewalks and then every day around space station inside and out uh, we're always having to use our uh, you know our 
our human minds to help solve problems that can't always be predicted. And uh, a lot of the work that I did for my father, a lot of the training that I got from him has uh, served me well in an environment like this. Thank you. The, the next question, uh, I guess we're running out of time. I certainly thank all three of you. I appreciate it very much, and so does Cal State Fullerton, Tracy. And I think I'll be going now. Thank you very much. Have Thank a you. great rest of voyage. Hey, Russ. Thank you very much, and go Titans. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. It's NBC and Cal State Fullerton. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. And Tracy, while.